So, this is the Tikkun El of Eir Kolol, and it's Baruch Fleischmann speaking again. We're going here to Mizmor number 6. As we are saying the Shiurim in the year 5784 in the Jewish calendar, uh, we're reminded of the fact that we are at war. And what we're looking over here when we see the life of our King David, that he spent a tremendous amount of time at war. And through all of these wars, he never lost track of the one, the singleness of the universe and addressing himself to that truth. So here we see that he has lived the full life, a life of 70 years, and we know that there is pain in all of the different corners of a life. As long as it goes on, it, we experience a physical pain because the world is not the Garden of Eden. So here we see our king lying in his bed in a terrible illness. And we're going to read about this, and this is the psalm number six that he composed then. So the art scroll writes, David composed the psalm when bedridden with a terrible illness, which enfeebled his entire body. Righteous man that he was, he accepted his pains as a means to release his soul from the shackles of sin. Hmm. The Shminis. Now here's another instrument. Shmini is like the number eight, but it's an instrument. So he says the eight strings instrument, says here we're talking about strings instruments, which it accompanied this sound relates to this theme. Now I wish we had this and I wish we had a recording. God should bless us that we should rediscover the level of this music. There's more to be said about music. Maral and Hirsch, these are two commentaries on this story, discussed in many of their writings the significance of the numbers 6, 7, 8, and 10. 6 symbolizes the cube from covered from all the cube form covered from all sides a three-dimensional unit representing the total perfection of this physical world created in 6 days now i'm not sure that i got the idea somebody maybe could could tell me how the six that the cube represents six but that's what he said now he said seven always indicates the diverse element connected with that physical world of creation as we find on the holy sabbath now in, in kabbalah this is called malchus the seventh day number seven now eight eight however heralds release from this world now eight is the concept of going when you're going from six to seven that the numbers in Kabbalah are progressing downwards because the seventh is the end sphera. So we're going to six, so it's right before it. And its constant there in, in Kabbalah is that it's mashpia, that it pours all of its energy into the malchus, which is below it, which is the female uh, aspect. So the seventh day, that's the seventh day is malchus. Now the eighth is moving back the other direction. That is back through physicality and reaching into a higher place. And this is what he says. Eight, however, heralds release from this world. In other words, the world of Bina. He says, redemption from all bodily and moral ills. Resurrection from all physical decay. This is primarily the condition of the future. When Messiah will loosen the bonds which shackle us, shackle us to this world. And this is what we understand as the end of the world. And he's excited. Let me read it again because it's there are so many false ideas because of our really attachment to this world. But he says, eight, however, let's read the heralds released from this world. Now this in Kabbalah is called the Aliyah of Malchus to Bina, that the lower world actually achieves the consciousness, the permanent consciousness of the world that came before this one. From this world... He says, redemption from all bodily and moral ills, resurrection from all physical decay. This is primarily the condition of the future when Messiah will loosen the bonds which shackle us to this world. You realize that we're all indentured to this world? That the things that we must do to stay alive, to be able to live in a, in a community and people in, sa in safety, this is a whole process that we have to go through every single day. Similarly, let's speak to something else. Circumcision is before, performed on the eighth day. 
teaching that a basic prerequisite for our covenant, our bris, that the bris is in a special place. That bris with God is that we free ourselves from the fetters of the sensual world, of the libidinal world, the, the will of loss and tithes, symbolized by the arla, the foreskin. The harp of, of the harp of ten strings, however, is reserved for the day when all of the world will unite into one harmonious whole. Now he says David's choice of the messianic shminis. So shminis is the concept. The, the, I must have had just an absolute, un, 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 unbelievably ethereal uh, note. I think, like some guitar players, electric guitar, a lovely, a good electric guitar can reach tremendous, tremendously high notes. And those notes can transport you. And here's the Sheminis, the, the eighth, it's the eighth stringer. It's an instrument to accompany this particular psalm denotes terrible anguish over his desecration of his brisk covenant with God because of sin. This is David talking about his sexual sin. He yearns to achieve a self-discipline the messianic proportions thereby liberating himself from the lusts and desires which drew him to sin. Now, Radak explains that David did not dedicate this psalm to himself alone. He meant it to be a prayer for every person, every person in distress, particularly for the Jewish people. Look at us now, when sick and impressed in exile. Indeed, David's intention was fulfilled, for this psalm has been incorporated into our daily prayers. It is a part of a psalm we call Tachnon, which is supplications. Tachnon, a plea, please, for forgiveness and mercy. Let's let's hear the psalm. This is, of course, in English. English, and let me get it over here a little bit better. Uh, let's see where is the beginning of this psalm. That's number five. So I'm missing a page. Here we go. So the psalm says, the little interference on my screen, the psalm says, for the conductor with instrumental music. On the Shemin is the song of David. Hashem, do not rebuke me in your anger, nor chastise me in your rage. Favor me, Hashem, for I am feeble. Heal me, heal me, Hashem, for my bones shudder with tears. My soul, too, is utterly terrified. And you, Hashem, how long? Desist, Hashem. Release my soul. Save me as befits your kindness. For there is no mention of you in death. In the lower world, who will praise you? I am wearied with my sigh. Every night my bed I drench. I drench it with my tears. I soak my couch. My eye is dimmed with anger, aged by my tormentors. Depart from me, all evil doers, for Hashem has heard the sound of my weeping. Hashem has heard my plea. Hashem will accept my prayer. Let all my foes be ashamed and utterly terrified. They will regret and be instantly shamed. You've been listening to the Tikkun Elevator Kolel. YouTube has been very kind to us and allowed us to reach out. This is Baruch Fleischmann, your lift manager here.